built, as I said, HRK built it. It cost $169 million to build it. Um, when we had first opened the stadium, it held 42,000 fans. We now hold 35,000 fans. It originally had 120 luxury suites. We now have 73 luxury suites. I will explain this all as we go along. <laughs> Why it changes. <laughs> Everybody's in suit coats and hats yeah. and, you know. Um, now, as I said, it could hold 80,000 fans. When the Beatles came through, they played in here in 1964. Um, when Billy Graham was still doing his crusades, they got over 100,000 people in this place. Wow. Now, you notice the fencing here? This fencing, we had a manager named Bill Vec back in the years. Bill Vec did a lot of odd he things. He was crazy. He was. Um, he had a dime of our nickel beer night, didn't he? Yeah. Yep. Um, he had the midget wrestling night too. I mean, but this fencing here, because the bleachers are 470 feet away from home plate, nobody hit a home run directly into those bleachers anybody, anytime we play there. But this fencing here, Bill Vec realized, oh, wait a minute, Yankees are coming in. Let's move it back. Because he put it in so that they could get more people standing room only there to get more people into the stadium. And then they moved it back when the Yankees came in. The next team coming in was the St. Louis Browns, the next coming in. They didn't, weren't as great a hitter, so he moved the fence in. <laughs> Major League Baseball heard about this and said, uh -uh. you can only, wherever the fence is at the beginning of the season, that's the way it stays. You can move it to the next year, but you can't do it during the season. <laughs> Bob Feller, we love Bob Feller. He did his on, on entire here. career here. He started when he was 17. They found him because he could throw through a barn. They went out, a tr uh, he had no you know, manager or anything, went out and talked uh -huh. to his dad and him and watched, the, the scout watched him throw it through the barn in Iowa. <sighs> Hired him on the spot at 17. He worked, did his entire career with the Cleveland Indians except for the four years when World War II happened and he immediately joined the Navy for those four years, right oh, after he I didn't know war. that. It was probably at the height of his career, but he came back after the war and continued his career with us, and when he retired, he stayed in Cleveland, even though he was from Iowa. He really liked it here, and he would come to every Indians game that he could possibly come to, and he would come and sit in this press box. And even the great Bob Feller, who we would do anything for at the stadium, was not allowed to sit in the front row. Huh. He sat right up behind you, where that plexiglass box is. <laughs>
actually from one of the bridges in Plants called the Columbus Road Bridge. They were rebuilding it and they reclaimed the wood and it's being reused in here. These bases are from, they're molds from a foundry that doesn't exist anymore. So it's a way of bringing the city yeah. into the park again. Next on Street, um, it's really cool. It's named Sweet Moses because Moses Cleveland founded Cleveland. <laughs> that I didn't know. Only fans that have tic special tickets can come down here. This door is where the players come in from the parking lot. <laughs> These double doors over here is the family reading room for the Indians' children. Cool. It is the best daycare facility in the city of Cleveland <laughs> behind the door. He works for the Lily in the clubhouse here and he makes these Legos. There used to be another one over here. I was missing it for sure. Look into the bathroom here. This is the way the bathroom looks when the players are here. Holy cow. <laughs> Need a product? Uh huh. Amazing. <laughs> wow. Now, here we are in the visitor clubhouse. In his clubhouse is three times this size. Okay. There are 52 lockers here. Why do you need 52 lockers for a baseball team? No, the coaches have theirs out there. Oh, okay. oh um, 52. It was built this way in 1994. Why would they do that? They didn't have that many player, people coming. Now they have it's that many people coming. They call ups. I don't know why. They just thought they might need them. And they do. They use them all now because the masseuses come in, the trainers oh. come in, the interpreters come in. <laughs> Everybody comes in, so all these get filled up. The lowest number of the player of the visiting team is that first locker there, and then they're going around. Okay, so they line up. Willie has a card for every player of every team all the way through the minors, so that if the minor shows up, he gets called up he on that card, it tells Willie how that player wants his locker set up. The hat on the second row, the hat on the top, wow. the lower row to the right, to the left, where he wants his uniform, right or left, shoes pointing in, shoes pointing out. Because <laughs> these guys are highly superstitious. Yes. This machine over here has every single video game on it that you can imagine. I wonder why they needed a gun for baseball and Doc Mario. It has everything on it. They have the original Nintendo. That machine over there is a golf machine to keep them busy. There's over 200 DVDs here for them to watch movies. Um, I'm pro they probably have Netflix or Hulu here too, okay. or, um, both. or both. There's even a chess set over there. But Willie's been voted. He does this because he wants our team to be treated as well when we, they go out of town. Willie will do anything for these guys. They're on the road all the time. The guys remember, oh, my wife's anniversary. Our anniversary is tomorrow. Can Willie? Can you send her flowers and chocolate? It's Mother's Day. Can you send flowers to my mom? My mom's in Venezuela, the Dominican Republic. Willie does this. There was one player that came up to Willie and said, here, get me a new car. I want to trade this in. It happened. Wow. Willie called up the Cadillac dealership. They came in with a paper on Sunday morning, signed it, and the guy had a new car. Wow. Jeez. I need to know Willie. <laughs> yeah. They have, one of the guys came in and said, my wife wants these high-end expensive shoes. And they try to explain, this is not New York, this is not Chicago, this is Cleveland. <laughs> so they're out on the field playing. Well, he sends one of his guys over to Eastside Mall, Beachwood Mall. We have a, high, a couple high-end stores over there. The guy's with his phone taking pictures of the shoes, <laughs> sending them back to Willie to show to the guy, yeah, player to say, figure out which shoes he was talking about. And they got sent to the wife. <laughs> this is some of the stuff they're allowed, so they do have Corona and... Mm -hmm. Beer in there. <laughs> now, you notice all these steps we're walking down? Yep. In this clubhouse, it's a ramp. It's we'll say, uh, 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 and now we're going to quickly come into the dugout here and go out. Because we don't care about the visitors. Now, all the ducks. It's rubber. It's rubber. It's recycled car and truck rubber. 
you know, the track here and the, the, that is real grass. We do not touch the grass. We do not walk on the grass. We only have good thoughts about it. <laughs> real grass. These days are dugout the drug mart side there's a staircase this side of the wall not that side of the wall because that goes to those seats this side of the wall there's a staircase there if you get in at the game when you come in at the gate for the game immediately go to the usher standing at the top of that staircase they will give you a wristband and with that wristband it will give you a time that you can come out to the old bullpen dugout sitting there and you can sit there for a half an hour so there's a baseball stuck in yeah, the middle. Yeah, there are like three of them up there. Look, there's two more right there. Well, that's probably from yesterday. Yesterday we had John Marshall and Rhodes High Schools here with a playoff. Oh. They hand paint this every get before every game, so you can barely see the Indians now. So that will be hand spray. seen them pitch to twice they do tea work oh. this is what they do when Michael Brantley was in jury the last two years every day he was in there with his dad doing tea work oh. I came for a tour in May last year a after evening tour of special group rented out the corner bar and Bob and I were taking off the evening tour and I came we did, I did a backwards one he did a frontwards one so I started with the batting cages we came down the elevator I got off the elevator and I hear Brantley was in here with his dad, and his son was in this cage, pitching. Oh. And it was like, it's 7.30 at night, the team isn't in town, they're on a, it's not even a game night, so technically he really didn't have to be doing anything, but yeah. he was in here working. Yeah, but we've got it by an average, huh? Right. Team shop, and I want to thank you guys for coming. Oh, the money you. you paid for the tour actually does not go to Cleveland Indians. It goes to Cleveland Indians Charities. Yeah. These days are all I want to be These days are all
So we just got done touring the progressive field tour here. What was your favorite part about touring this thing? The home dugout. The home dugout? Uh, mine was probably just here in the history of, of the stadium. It, I mean, I don't really know a whole lot about baseball, but I, it was kind of neat to hear the different personal stories of players and uh, of what was going on you know, behind the scenes. That was kind of neat. Who are your top three favorite Cleveland Indians players? If you had to boil down the top three Cleveland Indians players, who would they be? Uh, off the top of my head, Frankie Tony Vizquel. Frankie, like uh, Frankie who? Francisco Lindor. Francisco you Lindor. Know, the manager she was talking about that. <laughs> I thought Lindor was the Cleveland Indians manager. It goes to show how much I know about the Indians. This is right.